Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, solve this absolute value inequality. When solving absolute value inequalities, we've got to make sure we, um, two things. One, we set up two cases, the positive and the negative, and as well as always go back and check our solutions, especially when we have variables on both sides. So to first go ahead and do this, um, what we first need to do is isolate the absolute value. Once we've isolated the absolute value, then we can create our two cases. So to isolate this absolute value, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. By dividing by 2 on both sides, I now obtain 5x minus 4. OK, so now I can set up two cases. And my first case would be 3x minus 7 is equal to 5x minus 4. So when you create your two cases, what you're basically doing is eliminating that absolute value. Because we're saying the absolute value could equal positive or it could equal a negative value. And equals a negative. 5x minus 4. Now notice how I included the parentheses, because it's not just negative 5x, it's negative 5x minus 4. So I am going to have to distribute this. So therefore, it really is negative 3x minus 7 equals negative 5x plus 4. OK, so now, ladies and gentlemen, what I need to do is um, um, uh, I need to solve for x, right? So to solve for x, I need to get the variables on the same side. So here, um, I'm going to choose to get the variables both on the left side. So I'll subtract negative 5. Actually, you know what? Let's always make them positive. So here, I'll subtract a 3x on both sides. Here, to make them to positive, rather than subtracting 3x on both sides, if I subtract a 3x on both sides, that would, make that, that would eliminate the 3x here, but that, that would make that a negative 8x. I don't really want to deal with uh, a negative, so I'm going to add 5x onto both sides over here. Well, negative 3x minus 3x is 0x, so I'm left with a negative 7 equals 8x minus 4. Over here, that goes to 0. I have 8x minus 7 equals positive 4. Now, to go ahead and solve for x, now these are two-step equations. So I'll add 4, add 4, and I get negative 3 equals 8x. And over here, I add 7, and I get 8x equals, equals 11. Now, solve for x, I divide by 8, divide by 8, divide by 8, divide by 8, and I have x equals a negative 3 eighths, and x equals 11 eighths. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to my original equation, all right, and I'm going to take my solutions and plug them in for x. Now, one thing we notice is that when I take a, a negative 3 eighths, and I multiply it by 10, and then I subtract 8, that's going to give me a negative number. And remember, an absolute value can never equal a negative number. So therefore, this is not a part of our solution. However, if I plug in 11 eighths in on this side um, and go ahead and do the math and work on it, you can check with your calculator. I'm not going to go through the whole step. But you can plug 11 eighths into there. Probably be best to use your calculator. And what you'll notice is that it will work. But the reason why, again, negative 11 or negative 3 eighths does not work is because when you plug in negative 3 eighths, OK, it doesn't really matter what exactly the value is. You're still going to have negative 30 eighths minus 8. So you're going to have a negative number. Whatever this is, you know, you can do the math, but it's not really important. You just know you're going to have a negative number. Well, an absolute value can never equal a negative number. It always is, remember, absolute value is always going to be positive. So therefore, the only solution we have is x equals 11 eighths. Thanks.